Hi, I'm William Shekel from the Chambers Rescue Channel, and today I want to talk to you about why you should own a vintage stove. Every week I get asked, is a vintage stove something I can actually own? Can I have that in my house and use it and it'll be all right? And every now and then I get asked, why would I want to own a vintage stove? Well, if either of those things are things that you've thought, this one's for you because I'm here with the list. The first reason you should own a vintage stove should leap right out at you in this, in this picture. Design. Whether your tastes lie in antique or art deco or mid-century modern or really anything else, vintage stoves come in all shapes, sizes, colors. They can fit anyone's aesthetic, anyone's lifestyle. When did we decide that every appliance leads, needs to look exactly the same? walk through a big box store, go through their appliance aisles, all with maybe the knobs are a little different. They all look the same. Your life isn't the same as everybody else's. Your home isn't the same uh, as everybody else's. The kitchen is the heart of your home. The stove is the heart of your kitchen. Let it reflect your life. Choose a design that actually appeals to you. And design isn't just about the color of the knobs or the shape of the stove. It's also as practical uh, and it's also a practical matter. Let's say you don't have a lot of counter space. Well, you, need, you want a design that accommodates that. Look at this, this is a smooth top, perfect for prep. You can do all your prep right here. Pop it into the oven. Notice that you don't see any stovetop burners. Where's the stovetop? Well, it's right here. And you know why? Because sometimes you don't want to deal with the mess. Sometimes you don't want to clean up right after you're done cooking. You want to sit down and enjoy the meal you just made. So you know what you do? You close the lid and then it's gone. Chambers did that for decades. And a friend of mine call, uh, calls the covers that they have mother-in-law covers, which I love because it's like, you know, you're gonna get criticized. So how do we make the criticism go away? We just cover up the mess. Plenty of stove brands did that for a very long time. Design is both aesthetic and practical and it's something missing in our stoves today. The next reason is reliability. This stove is ready to roll home. It's from 1927. This one's ready to be restored. It's from 1929. This one's all ready to get shipped out, 1951. We don't have appliances anymore that can last for decades. If you go to a big box store, three to seven years is what they're, what they're gonna tell you. I just had to replace a dishwasher, three years old. Wasn't cheap the first time. And the reason I had to replace it was because we couldn't find a serviceable or a workable circuit board. The circuit board was fried. So you know, all that money out the, out the door, we had to get a new one. It's insane to me that that is expected. And if you go into your super high-end boutiques, and I get this from clients a lot, they spend a lot of money on very high-end brands. And fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 later, they find out at most, last nine, maybe 11 years, that's what you're spending all that money for. You can, for the same or less money, you can get something that'll last 70 or 100 years. Your grandkids could be, be cooking on it. You can own this for as long as you choose to, not until it breaks, because once it's been restored, it's going to be fine. That's real reliability. That's also real cost efficiency. If you want to spend your money wisely, then spend it once and use that thing for the rest of your life. You shouldn't have to uh, dispose of your appliances so frequently. That's just wasting money. It's called planned obsolescence. We can build things that last forever, but we don't because if they last forever, you'll never buy a second one. Why do you think LED light bulbs blow out? LEDs last forever, but they can't build an LED light bulb to last forever or you'll never buy a second one. So they have planned obsolescence. It'll last a little longer than your old light bulb, but not so long that they won't make money. These were not built with that kind of thinking in mind. They were built to last forever. And a hundred years later, they still are working. They can work in your home too. That's great for reliability. That's great for cost efficiency. 
And the reason that it's so good is because it allows you to spend your money on the only thing you should ever have to do to any appliance, and that's repair it. There is not a single thing in the stove I can't repair, and it's not because I'm some super genius, it's because I own a screwdriver. And I bet you own a screwdriver too. Now, if you don't know, there's a whole lot of companies out there in the world of cars and tractors and, uh, and phones that actually want to disallow you from repairing what you bought. It's called the right to repair. And it's a major issue for a lot of people who want to be able to fix something but they can't. I couldn't get a repairman to fix my dishwasher because the circuit board wasn't available anymore three years later. You want to be able to fix something that you spent a lot of money on? And I'll tell you, it's a typical question that I get from, uh, from new, new owners who are about to get their stove. They say, well, what should I expect down the road in terms of repair? And I kind of want to ask, well, what do you intend to break? Because on a chambers, what might go wrong? after it's been fully restored, after it's been torn down and rebuilt, might break a spring. So you're going to run to the hardware store and buy a dollar spring and put it back in. And that's a whole lot better than throwing the whole thing out. And, and that's even worst case scenario. That's not even likely. So the right to repair is absolutely uh, something that if you care about, it's a reason why you should own a vintage stove. And the next is, frankly, off-grid living. Whether you have a great cabin somewhere, you, uh, you live where uh, there isn't reliable service, whether that's a grid issue that we're seeing increasingly across the country, or whether it's simply, hey, you live in, in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to have to rely on everybody else, these don't require electricity. You can be 100% off the grid. These all will work on natural gas, butane, or propane. It's not a complicated con uh, uh, conversion to make. And, you know, it's funny. I was just talking with a, uh, with a kitchen planner or a kitchen designer last week, and he's like, and he, we were uh, measuring out the stove, and he said, well, where does the electricity go? And I said, there's no electricity. And he actually said, well, then how does it work? It's like the magic of fire that we have had for thousands of years. You can be completely off the grid. You can be in the middle of a hurricane, a thunderstorm, or some other reason why the power went out and still cook. You can live off the grid with a vintage stove. You can't say that for something that has an electric starter built in and that requires you to make sure there's a spark to ignite the flame. Just not necessary. All you need for these, at worst case scenario, the grill lighter. Yeah, again, spend a dollar at a hardware store and you can live off grid with these. The next reason to own a vintage stove is something I hear people talk about, but I don't see them put their money where their mouth is. And that's when they say that they care a lot about whether or not their things are made in America. If you want made in America, you're going vintage. This was made in Indiana. So was this. I've got stoves in here that were made in California and Pennsylvania and Maine and New Hampshire and Brooklyn. You're not gonna find that in your big box store. If you actually care about Made in America, a vintage stove is absolutely the way to go. The next reason is they're environmentally friendly. If you think about the triangle of, uh, 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 that's on your recycling bin, the reason it's a triangle, you probably remember from grade school, the, the three points stand for reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce how much new material you require. Reuse the things that you can and recycle what you can't. The environmental cost of these has already been realized. This metal has been out of the ground. This paint is on. There is nothing more that this is going to cost other than getting it to you. Why throw something out when you can just reuse it? Restoration makes these safe and efficient for years to come, and the efficiency and watch all my other videos to talk about how to cook on retained heat, use less natural gas, use less propane. And you'll see that you can actually have an impact on the environment by using a vintage stove that no modern stove at any price tag will give you. And the last reason to own a vintage stove is maybe a little self-serving for me, but it's something that a lot of people care about, and that's supporting small business. 
There are about two dozen professional stove restorers in the United States right now. Every single one of us is a small business. So if you actually care, I, I mean, I'm me, I'm as small as you can get. And if you actually care about supporting small business, supporting local business, find a restorer, get a vintage stove, put it in your home, find the one that matches you, your life, your lifestyle, your aesthetic, your price point, they're all out there. They're ready to take home with you. They're ready to own. There's no good reason why you shouldn't own a vintage stove. Thanks, and I'll see you next time on the Chambers Rescue Channel.